Hello plan friends, this is Miro from Basie Plants and welcome to my channel. My friend told me that I should do a video on begonia care, peer pressure. So I decided to share my experience growing begonias with you. Today we will take a look at a cane type begonia that has taken over the Instagram in the past couple of years and it has also put other begonias into the spotlight. I'm guessing you could guess. Today we will take a look at begonia maculata. Now let's take it easy and slow down a bit because I'm not a begonia expert. You're damn right about that. Why don't you tell them what happened last year? Okay, so maybe last year I did kill a couple of begonias. <laughs> hey. Okay, okay. Okay, so I killed eight of them, but to be fair, they were all rhizomatous type begonias and those guys are really difficult. And on top of that, four of them arrived in a big pile of mush to me in a pancake-shaped box. Mm, that sounds like an excuse to me. You know, you know what? You know, do you want to do this video? I will go away, I will move, do you? Anyways, I am more like a second time begonia beginner but I am a sensible person. Uh, okay, that's a fair point. I am a sensible person when it comes to plant care and many of the things that I learned about begonias come from my own experience from just taking care of them and observing them. I got this begonia maculata in the fall of 2019 and it was a much smaller plant then, but it has done for me really well ever since I got it. First thing that I noticed about begonias, and I did have begonias prior to this begonia maculata, is that they're not really low light plants. I don't know where this myth comes from, but it's simply not true. They are not low light plants. They are not plants that will do well in direct sunlight, but definitely they will need light to grow well and to thrive. They will require a bright indirect light. Any type of bright indirect light will do. This begonia maculata has been close to my northwest facing window. It has been off to the side of any of the multitude of LED lights that I have in this room, but it has also lived under a very weak and very gentle LED light. It grew well all throughout the winter and it's constantly pushing out new growth for me. And I do contribute a lot of this growth due to the light that I am giving it. If I put this in a lower light, I do believe that it will not do so well. This begonia maculata was actually featured in one of the videos I did in March, something along the lines of 10 easy uncommon plants to grow. In that video, this begonia was two times smaller. It was about this size, I would say. All of this on the top is new growth that has come since March. First thing that I didn't do when it comes to this plant is I did not repot it when I got it. I left it in the mix it was in it was in a cocoa peat mixture and this really helped me because I'm a bit of an underwaterer myself. So I had time over the winter to learn more about the begonia, to observe it for longer, and I could water every two weeks and it was just fine. It did not do anything bad to this plant. I did repot it this spring and I used a bit of a different mix because of the setup in which I'm growing this plant. Because I'm super good with watering, I grow this begonia and all of my other begonias in self water pots. I did hack the pots myself and I will show you how they look like. The pot itself isn't very clean. Plants make mess. This pot has a plastic distancer at the bottom and it is this distancer that creates the self-watering reservoir. It is a very simple plastic thing and it can sit on the bottom of the pot. The reservoir itself is not very big. I would say it's only about one or one and a half centimeters tall. So there isn't much water here at the bottom. What allowed me to use this pot for self-watering is placing microfiber cloth at the bottom of my pot. You can just see here I use this as a wick. You shouldn't use any material that is similar to cotton or that will degrade over time. This is a microfiber cloth that I cut up and I just feed it inside the pot. This helps my plant be evenly moist so don't have to worry too much about watering. Another thing that I learned about begonias the hard way is the type of the pot that you will choose. You saw that this begonia is in a plastic pot. 
All of my begonias are in a plastic pot. I did try begonias in terracotta pot last year and that did not end well. Being an underwater, I just could not keep up with the watering schedule. It was too difficult for me. This doesn't mean that begonias cannot do well in terracotta pots. If you are a person who does well with watering, it may work for you. It definitely did not work for me. Now that they are in plastic pots, they have moisture for longer periods of time. Also, self-watering doesn't really work well with terracotta pots. All that moisture will be sucked in by the terracotta and there will be none left for the plant. I tend not to use any bark in my self-watering setup because bark isn't so wicking, so I just mixed cocoa peat, perlite, and general potting mix. There is a lot of perlite because there will be water all the time in the reservoir and I do not want the plant to rot. This setup works really well for my rhizomatous begonias as well. They are just enjoying it and I don't have to water. Works for me, works for them. I fertilize them every two weeks and I'm not particular about the fertilizer that I use. I just water from the top. I make sure that there isn't any water left in the reservoir in that case because I just don't want to have too much nutrients in the mix. Which could just end up burning the leaves, burning the roots, and it's not really a good look. There are times when cane begonias will get a bit kinda like this, and in that case it's totally fine to prune them. As a matter of fact, even if they lose all the leaves, they can recover. How do I know, you wonder? Well, the begonia maculata that you saw isn't my first begonia maculata. I got one begonia maculata in a trade. I had a very nice and large begonia that I bought in a flower store, and this lady said she doesn't have it, but she had maculata, and she wanted to trade this maculata with me. I was overjoyed because Obviously, I wanted maculata for a long time. I did not see pictures of her plant, even though I sent pictures of my plant because I was very naive. I thought begonia maculata was so special and I don't even deserve to see the pictures. It must be fine. Guess what? It wasn't. This begonia maculata arrived to me in a very dense mix in a 20 centimeter pot and there were just two sticks. No leaves. What are leaves for? I don't know. This is second begonia maculata today. It's looking quite nice. It does have that bare stem. This was one of the stems. This dead piece of stem, that's the second one. But these two new growths are actually coming from the bottom of this dried up stem. So they are attached to it, so I'm just going to leave this dead part here. The only thing I did, I potted it in a mix that's well draining, I put it in a bright spot, and they were able to push out this new growth. I would say that cane begonias are quite resilient plants. You may have issues with humidity. My humidity is generally okay. I still get brown tips and that doesn't mean it's only the humidity. You could be very irregular with your watering. Hello, my name is Miro and I am an underwaterer. If you go outside, if you take a look at any of the plants outside, you will see they're not perfect. So why do they have to be perfect in your own home? Just chill, chill out. It's a plant. If it's alive, be grateful. I never really had any pest pressures with my begonias. Even when I had thrips, they kind of stayed away from my begonias, even though they do look like a very delicious snack. With begonias, I would be very careful when you spray them with oil. If you are unsure if oil will work, it's always best to just spray one leaf and then see how it does. Maybe wait a day or two to see if the leaf will yellow if it will be damaged in any way. If you see that it is getting damaged, perhaps try a milder solution. I tend to use about 1.5 up to 2% of paraffin oil solution and I do not go above that. So I try to keep it very low so the plant doesn't get suffocated with all the oil. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you enjoyed seeing my two begonia maculatas. Once again, not a begonia expert, just a begonia beginner and I'm trying to figure stuff out. If you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like. Why not? If you enjoyed it, I mean, I don't see... I. I don't see the reason why wouldn't you subscribe. If you have any questions about begonias, make sure to leave a comment below, but do mind that I'm not an expert. I hope that you're having a great day and I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. If you would like, you can also follow me on Instagram at basie.plants and I will see you in our next video on Wednesday. Bye!